Okay, we're looking at reviewing daily task assessment for 18.8 .8, as well as the homework practice pages and additionally the two additional assessments that follow the last page of the homework and practice. So we got a, quite a few things to check today. Remember that the uh, assessments that follow, please check them, give yourself a score and be ready to give me your score the next time we have our live streaming. So it may not be Friday, or it'll just be the next time we have the live streaming. So group D, you're gonna be giving me uh, a report on how you did, and we will discuss that further to, uh, during our live streaming session. So let's go ahead and take a look at our daily task assessment. We're looking at the unit of uh, measurement for weight, for mass. It's either in kilograms or grams, we know that one gram is about the weight of a paper clip, and we know that one kilogram is about 1,000 paper clips. So let's go ahead and take a look at number 10, or turkey vulture weighs about as much as a laptop computer, which is the best unit to measure, best unit of measure to find the mass of a turkey. Again, the mass of a turkey, we're not gonna go and look at liters, that's for liquid. Okay, ounces is not the metric system so you have grams and kilograms your answer would be kilograms so the next one is asking you which items mass should be measured in grams so you have two large objects here knowing that these two large objects you will be using kilograms your best choice is this highlighter marker right here so we're looking at a multi uh, multi-step word problem the third grade classes are making three salt maps on a thin piece of plywood. Together, the three maps will have a total mass of six kilograms. So there's three salt maps. So there's three. Each one, all three together have a total mass of six kilograms. So if we divide six divided by three, it's two. So each one of the salt maps will weigh two kilograms and if the salt mass that's the salt mass is about half the mass of each lap of each map which is the mass of salt needed for each map so it's half for each map okay the, if the salt mass is about the half of the mass of each map which is the mass of salt needed so a half of two is one and if you don't want to know what a salt map is Salt maps are maps made out of, when you combine dough or flour, salt, um, a little bit of water, it creates a dough, a dough-like substance, and you are able to create features like this, paint them, and they, they harden up. They start to get hard, and they look like three-dimensional models there so it's a good idea we might be able to be doing some of these in the near future coming up i really like how these turn out they turn they turn out very well traditionally we do these in class so that i can guide you with it but i think since because of the times we may decide to do this in our next science or social studies lessons okay so we got number 12 done let's look at the uh, number 13 dan wants to find the mass of a large pumpkin again again large pumpkin well, inch, that's not a, we don't use an inch to measure mass. Uh, the liter is not being used, that's liquid. So it's either gram or kilogram. If it's a large pumpkin, it'll be the kilogram. So let's take a look at your homework and practice. Okay, so now we're looking at what unit we'd use to uh, measure the mass. So for the turkey to be the kilogram, of course, for the feather would be gram, crayon would be gram, light, the uh, lamp would be kilogram, the baseball would be grams, and this uh, teapot would be kilograms. So you're getting the idea of the larger the object, use kilograms. The smaller the object, it'll be the gram. That's what we want for you to be able to see. Okay, we have uh, number seven here. 
So a bag of peanuts weighs about 36 grams, okay. A bag of walnuts, walnuts weighs 42 grams. Yola buys two bags of each, so two bags of each. How many grams of nuts does Yola have? Represent your steps. So there's two steps you can do. You can add 36 two times, get that sum, and then add 42, 42 two times, get that sum, add those two together, and you get 156. Or the easy way to do it is add 36 and 42. Add 36 and 42, you get 78. Then you multiply 78 by two by the, by the two bags, and you get 156. So there's two different ways. This one is going to vary. You have one kilogram. You were asked to draw something here that could weigh a kilogram. And uh, a loaf of bread would be the most common one, a kilogram. But if you have something at home that has the measurement, uh, the uh, unit the of, of its mass somewhere, you could use that. So that's all we want you to see there. Okay, let's go to the next questions. Again, we're looking at well, what type of unit would you use to measure the mass? A juice box weighs about, about as much as a softball. So which is the best unit to use to measure the mass of a juice box? And we already know softball. We know it's not going to be pounds because that's not metric. We know it's not going to be milliliter because that does not measure mass. So again, it's either gram or kilogram, and it will be gram. We uh, Sometimes we get mixed up with a milliliter. Okay, We get mixed up, but that's um, that measures your volume of liquid. Number 10, Antonio wants to find some mass, uh, the mass of his backpack filled with books. So again, which unit should he use? Okay, ounce is not, it's either gram or kilogram. Okay, remember ounce, quart, they both measure liquid volume. Okay, one is the customary and one is the, well, but they're both are customary here. So it's either kilogram or gram, it'd be kilogram. So the next one, same type of questions. Which item's mass should be measured in kilograms? So all of these are pretty light objects, to say the least. So your baseball bat will be measured in, ki in kilograms. Okay, now you have the opposite here. You got large items. What, which item's mass should be measured in grams? Okay, it's not to say you can't measure these in grams. You can convert it into grams. But if you were going to use one unit, which one would it be to make it easier on you? It would be the gloves. Would you you would use grams to measure that one? Okay, let's go to your multiple uh, multi-step questions. So Sarah's making fruit salad for a picnic. She slices three kilograms of apples, five kilograms of peaches, and two kilograms of strawberries. She divides. Oh, I already see a key right there. She divides the fruit into five large bowls. How much? How many kilograms of fruit are in each bowl? So the key, you add your kilograms of fruit. So 5 plus 3 is 8, plus 2 is 10. And you have them in five bowls divided equally, so your answer would be 2. The next one, Desiree's baking cakes. She needs 9 grams of baking powder and 12 grams of baking soda. She divides the baking powder and baking soda among three pies and it's equally how many combined grams of baking powder and baking soda will each pie get again you add your dry items which are the grams here the baking powder and the baking soda so 9 plus 12 is what 21 and how many pies there's three divide them equally so your answer would be seven Okay, that concludes the review of 18.8. Now we're going to jump into the assessments that are at the end of your unit. And it starts off with the Module 8 assessment. And it's going to be a quick review of some of the lessons that we've had in this unit. If you have not finished this already, you can stop the video, work it out, and practice. Again, this is practice. Okay. So I'll walk you through this. What is the capacity? Capacity is the amount of a contain amount. Capacity is the amount a container can hold, and it gives you the page number where you found the answer. 
and mass, we just did that one, can be measured in kilograms. Now, it could also say grams here, but you don't have grams as one of your choices here, okay? So that's why that's that answer. Because I get this one a lot. Oh, it's Mr. Lopez, it's, it's grams also. Yes, it is grams, but they don't give you that choice here. So we're going back to the the fractions uh, in our number line, and it's asking you to mark one qu a quarter, a thir three fourth, and two over two, which is a whole. And then it asks you which is the closest to zero, and zero is here. One quarter is the closest to zero. Which one is the farthest from zero? So it would be four over four and two over two. So once you plot these, you're able to answer these. Okay, for the farthest, it could be this one or this one. So we're going to uh, choose the best unit to measure each capacity. We're looking at cup, pint, quart, or gallons. So you got a bathtub, which, you just, which is the largest one, the gallon. You have a pitcher, it's the one in the middle, so it's the quart, and then a dog bowl, which you would use a cup for. Okay. So then you have to choose the unit you would use to measure the mass. We just did the mass right now. Earphones would be in, in grams. A lamp would be in kilograms. And the boots would be in kilograms. And you should already start seeing how these units to measure mass are related to, to the objects they are being used for. Okay, let's keep moving. We're looking at question number 10. Okay, we have a time question. So he's soccer, at soccer practice, Valerie ran for 13 minutes and practiced drills for 20 minutes. She left practice at 2.15 p.m. At what time did Valerie arrive at soccer practice? So you add the number of minutes. So it's 13 plus 20. So that's what? That's 33, and you should already start seeing it right now, right? If you see your clock here. And this is 2.15, okay? We have to go back 33 minutes. So this is 2.15, we go back 15, that's one o'clock. We go back another 15, that's 1.45. And then you uh, subtract the last three and you get to the 42, so it's 1.42. So remember, what we get your number of minutes that she accumulated and then just go backwards. Or you could also, you have used the number line. But remember, you're, you're going back 33 minutes. And the key is remember, when you go back from here, once you get to the 12 here, you once you go back here, then you, sub, you have to subtract one because you're going back into time. Okay, so we're looking at the next question. We just covered something like this. And what you're doing here is just What's the, what is the mass of the pencil? So you have to count the grams and you count them and there's six. Be very careful of choosing one because sometimes if you read it carefully, you're gonna say, oh, it's being measured in with one grams. Yes, but what's a total of grams? Next one, Ariel and Vienna baked a pan of brownies. They divided the pan of brownies into eight equal squares, okay? Each square, each weighing two ounces, okay? What is the combined weight of the brownies? And they're giving you ounces and pounds. Well, when you add, there's eight squares. Each one weighs two ounces. So you get a total of what? 16 ounces. And we already asked, and if you know your units here, okay, of weight, you know that 16 ounces make one pound. 16 ounces make one pound. So that's how we got that one. And I know you remembered that one. Number 12, which measurement unit would you use to find the total liquid of this container? And again, you're, you're not gonna use pounds, you're not gonna use grams, you know, milliliters is the smallest one, so it'd be liters here. So they throw these other ones in there to throw you off. So don't get caught with those. I know you're doing a great job. We have another time question here. Again, we go, let's see what they do. Alan, oops, Alan, okay. Alan started his homework at 8.10 and worked for 45 minutes. 
Then he phoned a friend and talked for 20 minutes. Alan went to bed at 9.15 p.m. How much time elapsed from Alan starting his homework, which is here, until he went to bed, which is here? How much time elapsed? Well, you just add these two. That's the time that elapsed between here and here. And if you put it in the number line, 810 would be here, 915 would be here, and then this would go right here. And it'd be what? 65 minutes, which is your answer right here. I know these are getting very easy for you. Let's continue, and I believe this is the last one for this one. Now it jumps into the Unit 4 assessment. Okay, so let's see how you did here. And here you have your vocabulary words. It also gives you the page number. Liquid volume is the amount of liquid in a container. Liquid volume. Okay, none of these would also elapse time. Parallelogram, trapezoid. Liquid. It even has the word liquid in it. And our good old friend, the trapezoid here, is the only is the quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel parallel lines. And if you remember that quadrilateral, this is my favorite. These two that are parallel. Okay, we have another time question. A couple more time questions. Let me work those out the same way we did. So you need to find find the starting time or ending time. Okay, so they give you the elapsed time. So walk dock for 20 minutes, wash car for 20 minutes, okay, and they ended at 1030. So what is your, what do you do? Well, you add these, okay, so that's what, 40 minutes? So that's 40 minutes, okay, so from 1030 to 10, that's 30 minutes. Now you got to go back another 10 and that takes you to 950. 950. Okay. And this is 10. Okay. And this is the 30. So they give you the starting time. They want to know the ending time. Starts at 327 and practice for piano for 15, play soccer for 10. We add these two. We get what? 25. And then we add it to the starting time. We add it to the starting time. And that gives us 52, and it's 352. Okay, the next one, we're looking at our three-dimensional figures here. Okay, if you remember what faces were, it's these right here. You have to visualize these. Edges are your lines right here, and vertices are these right here, okay? So when you count your faces, it's this one here. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. So it's this one here, this one here, this one here, and then this one here in front, and then that one there. The edges are your sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. And your vertices are six. One, oops, let me clear that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Remember your vertices are these. Same thing, how many faces? You have to see this, the one in the front, one, one in the top, two, one in the side, three, four, four, the one in the bottom, five, and the one here, six. Then your edges, you have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and your total is 12. And you have eight vertices, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's how you count those, okay? Remember your edges are these right here. Okay, let's look at number seven. Blake divided the figure in the right into equal parts. With equal, divided, Blake divided the figure at the right into equal parts with equal area which fraction names the area of each part. So you're looking at each part, this one, this one, this one. So there's three out of three, and they want to know just one part. Well, that's one out of three, one third there. The next one, what is the area of the figure at the right? And each one is a square unit. You just count each one, count each square unit, and you have 23 total there. Okay, number nine. 
Valentina is pouring water into a freshwater fish tank, which customary unit would you best to measure the capacity of the tank, the fish tank? Okay. So, your cup, no, quart, a pint, you would use the gallon for the fish tank. And that you just have to visualize which one's the best one to measure. Because your gallons, it's an eight gallon tank, five gallon tank, 12 gallon tank. They always refer to them as gallons. We have the perimeter here with the missing, okay, with the missing length, and we know we're solving for W. So all we do is we add these. They give us the total perimeter here. Okay, it's 24, so we just add and then subtract it from 24. 1 plus 5 is 6. 6 plus 3 is 13. 13 plus 2 is 15. 15 plus 6 is 21. We subtract 21 from 24, and that gives us 3 centimeters. The next one, Spencer drew quadrilaterals with two pairs of sides of equal length. Which figure does not? Two pairs of equal sides with equal length. These, this one, this one, two pairs of sides of equal length. Two pairs. Which one does not have two pairs? It's our good old friend, the trapezoid right here. And I believe this concludes the review of your assessments. Again, Review how you did here. Be ready to ask questions. Or if you have questions, be ready to ask them during our next live streaming session. And again, thank you very much for your for paying attention and staying focused on what we're doing. Please keep up your hard work and we will see you soon. For now, this is Mr. Lopez signing off.